I'm excited to talk to you now, Mark, because we are approaching a very choppy environment and a lot of fears about what a recession could look like. But the reality is, is you do very well when values start to drop, playing in distress. Do you see that opportunity here realistically right now, or how far is it away? Oh, no, it's happening right now. It's, uh, I think it's going to get worse. Um, and the simple reason for that is people need money, and banks have pulled back. Um, so at least for us, um, this is a phenomenal time for us because really what we're doing is just lending money and we're able to lend money at much higher rates than we used to be able to. So for us, this has been a great time. What does that mean? Is this all the activity you saw happening out of the regional banking system? How, how much are you actually able to step into that? Oh, a lot of it, it started as rates were moving up and what you found is that banks have been pulling back. Then what ended up happening with Silicon Valley National has made banks, especially regional banks, pull back even more. What you're finding is on the money central bank, so whether it's JP or Citi or B of A, um, they're not going to be able to pick up all of that. So for firms like us, especially in the middle market space, you're able to lend money um, where you've got the covenants that you want, you've got the terms that you want, um, you've got the collateral that you want. So it's probably as good as it gets and it's gonna just keep on getting better. So how much capacity is there realistically right now? There's a lot of talk about a credit crunch and the idea that there's going to be a wide scale contraction in credit. Private credit can take up some of that, but what is left behind? Look, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. I don't know what the real number is. It could be 500 billion, it could be a trillion. It's an issue, it really is. So you're gonna see that it's gonna have an impact and that's actually one of the reasons why the Fed sooner or later is gonna have to lower rates. Um, because right now the Fed is worried about inflation. Um, sooner or later it's gonna worry about a recession and when you worry about a recession, what do you do? You lower rates. So that's gonna happen. The question is, is it three months, six months, nine months from now? But it's definitely gonna happen before the beginning of next year. What's your base case on what a recession looks like? I think it's mild. I don't think it's, um, but ultimately at the end of the day, the biggest problem you've got is just a lack of capital, right? So businesses need capital to expand. Businesses need that capital. So it's either gonna be us that's gonna provide it or it's gonna be private equity or it's gonna be banks. You know, we're just going to charge, we're going to charge more, um, and we're going to charge le less than private equity. Now, if you think about all the, the risks in the market when it comes to financial tightening, one big worry out there is still the debt ceiling and what this debt limit dispute means for financial conditions. How concerned are you? It's an issue. It really is. Look, I believe that people ultimately will do the right thing. So I think if we default, that's actually bad for President Biden and it's bad for Republicans, right? So it's bad for Democrats, bad for Republicans. So people should act in their best interest, but really what they should focus on is acting in the best interest of Americans. Why do we want to default? It makes no sense. And so we shouldn't default because it's going to create a lot of issues and a lot of repercussions that we don't fully understand or know fully about. So there's no reason to go down that road. The markets are worried about it, but ultimately I think the market believes there's going to be a solution. Talk us through what the ramifications would be. If the U.S. were to face a downgrade, what is the ripple effect through the market? Uh, I think the markets could go down quite a bit. Um, I don't know what that number is. It, it's how bad is it? In essence, does it get resolved within a day or two? Is it a week? Is it a month? Um, the longer it would take, you're talking about equity markets getting hit pretty hard. Um, so that ultimately, I think both sides would quickly compromise. But why do you want to go down that road? It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, people will lose. I mean, if markets go down, you're talking about billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of value that's lost. Who's losing that? It's the average American. So why do you want to do that? It just doesn't make any sense. You know, we're already, despite this debt limit issue and despite a lot of what you're seeing in the regional banking system, we are already seeing the fastest pace of bankruptcies since 2009. Yep. What does that mean for what's still to come this year? 
You're going to have more issues. I mean, you're absolutely correct. You just have a lot of issues out there. Um, you're going to have more bankruptcies. You're going to have more problems. Um, the, that's why the Fed is going to lower rates, right? They're going to have to. And then the question is, is it a mild recession? Is it a hard recession? I think it ends up being a mild recession because the economy is doing well. But you're going to need more money into the system. That's why the Fed will lower rates. I want to pivot a little bit here because I think it is really telling. We are in a really tough fundraising cycle. Investors are pretty nervous about a recession, about the debt ceiling. But there are some areas that people are really excited about in investing, one of those areas being sports. Yes. You started off at SALT today uh, speaking with Alex Rodriguez, former Yankee star, about everything from recessions to housing to investing in sports. You recently sold your stake in the bucks. What does that mean in terms of where you're putting your money next? So I sold my stake. I thought when I look at where values of professional sports teams, I think that's still going up. I really do. For me, I thought it was the right time to sell. And, you know, we'll find out in five years if it was, right? Everybody will either say, oh, you shouldn't have sold, or they'll say that was a great sale. But I want to end up raising a sports fund. I think there's massive opportunities in sports, but I think those opportunities are in smaller teams. I want to be able to invest in Africa. I want to invest in Europe. I want to do things in Asia. I want to invest in women's sports. Like, if you think about what's happening, it's all about the media. More people are watching sports. As more people watch sports and there's more streaming, you're going to find that the values of sort of those teams are going to go up. But I want to be able to invest in a team today that's 50 million or 100 million that can be worth, you know, 500 or a billion in five or 10 years. I don't think, you know, when I sold my stake in the Bucks, I don't think that team is going to be worth five, 10 times that amount in five or 10 years. I think it'll definitely go up in value. But I think where the opportunities now are is in the smaller teams. I bought a pickleball franchise. I paid 100000 Are you calling the top of NBA valuation? No, 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 not at all. What I'm saying is those are going to keep going up, but they'll go up 5%, 10% a year, right? Pickleball three years ago was 100000 Today it's $10 million. Right, so that's a hundred times. How big of are your ambitions here? How much do you plan to raise uh, in this strategy? And are you are you pivoting as an investor? Is it that dr drastic? No, not at all. I think what we do is private credit. I think that's right now. That's a massive opportunity. I also think you have a huge opportunity in sports. Right, so that's going to be something else that we're going to focus on. Mainly because what I'm seeing is there's going to be more streaming. There's more interest. People now have more interest in their local teams. So you're going to see that women's soccer, women's NBA, you know, WNBA, those teams are going to go up in value. I want to invest in that. But when you look at where real money is going to be made, it's also on the private credit side. I mean, there is huge well, opportunity. Liquid credit. Are you buying, are you able to buy bonds given that spreads have not really meaningfully widened out here? You want to buy bonds in companies that have had problems. So if you think about Silicon Valley National, those bonds were at sort of 30, they're now at 60. Right? The perps, I think, were trading around sort of one, you know, a half, one or two, they're now trading at seven. Right, so you've got those opportunities, but you've got to wait. So you'd buy more regional bank bonds right No, now? I would buy bonds once companies end up having issues. After the fact. Right. I need to wait for a company to file. I need to wait for a company to where things are at their worst. That's when we want to invest. And just about 30 seconds here right sure. now, what is the best opportunity to invest in out there right now? Today? Today. I would say it's going to be two things. It's going to be private credit. Right, because I think you're getting massively overpaid for that risk. And then I think it's going to be investing in sports for a simple reason. I think if you're right in that, you can make 5, 10, 20 times your money.